Good evening. Welcome to Sound Health on Lagos Television. I am Ola Sumbomukwe. Thanks for always finding time to join us on the program. Today, we are looking at pancreatic cancer, one of the fourth leading cause of cancer death around the world. My guest is on standby. You'll get to know more about this disease. Please stay tuned. The conversation begins after this break. Behind every conflict, climate, food, and humanitarian crisis, there is a health crisis. In 2023, emergencies disrupted the lives of millions of people around the world with an enormous impact on health. Thousands of health professionals responded, many on the front lines. And WHO was there to support them. When they ran mobile clinics to treat trauma wounds, when they went door to door to deliver life-saving vaccines, when they coordinated with partners, and when they delivered medical supplies to reach hospitals in need. But why do they do this? Because the children need us. For them and for their families. Alleviate their suffering. To have a future. Have access to quality health services they need for the most vulnerable. Because it's the right thing to do. Because health is everything. Because I want to help. Make my life meaningful. We are people with solutions. We are people who are doing what it takes. We are committed, intrepid, and determined. We are the World Health Organization. In 2024, WHO will continue to work to help a mother deliver her baby safely in a war zone, to help vaccinate a child, provide mental health services to a father scarred by conflict, and to give a grandmother in a shelter her life-saving diabetes treatment. But we can't do this alone. In 2024, WHO needs $1.5 billion to respond to the health needs of the most vulnerable children, women and men. For this, we need your support to do everything we can and more. Lagos Television. Joining us via Zoom this evening is Dr. Temi Tokwe Olasunji Agumbiade, consultant radiation and clinical oncologist with the Oncology Department, Lagos State University Teaching Hospital, um, Ikeja, here in Lagos. Good evening, Dr. Olasunji Agumbiade, and thanks for joining us. Good afternoon, madam. How are you doing? Thank you for having me on the program. It's always a great pleasure to be here with you. All right. Um, so let's go straight um, to the business of the day. What exactly is um, pancreatic cancer? All right. Pancreatic cancer is a cancer that arises in the cells of the pancreas, which is a very vital organ that lies behind the stomach, the lower part of it. Its basic function is to secrete enzymes that helps us to digest our meals and also hormones to help our blood sugar control. It is indeed a very vital organ. And unfortunately, it is one of the dead, five deadliest cancers that can ever happen to any human being. So it's a major one. So basically, it is rare. It occurs in about um, 100,000 cases per year in Nigeria. You get to see it once in a while. Is it treatable? Yes, it is, if caught early. But if patient presents late, I mean, it's a major dilemma. We may not be able to cure it. Okay, um, so basically, the, okay, all right, go ahead with your thoughts. Go ahead, ma'am. Go ahead with your thoughts, please. All right, so, um, just a very quick one it's not common, but we get to see it. Like, currently, I know I have like two patients I'm managing in the oncology department with pancreatic CA. I mean, it's not looking good, they both presented late, but we're, we're doing what we can to at least improve the quality of life. Um, can you please tell us um, the symptoms to look out for in order to present early at the um, health facility? Okay, so um, there are basically no symptoms. It may be asymptomatic in the early stages. You may just still be living your life normally and not know that something is going on. But most patients, I mean, by the time they present, they would have, like, you know, um, they would have presented with features of maybe like complications, especially with they having unexplained weight loss. For, for several months and, you know, not knowing what to do, 
and you know they might be having uh, loss of appetite they might that i mean not even knowing then you know in our community the malaria is endemic we are always treating malaria so they may have um, symptoms are close to features of malaria, feeling tired, there's fatigue, they don't feel like eating and all that. And sometimes they may even present with um, abdominal pain. This kind of abdominal pain will radiate to the back or radiate to the side. All right. So uh, sometimes they may even feel nauseous or in some patients they may have like fluids in their tummy and all that. The one that is really common that we get to see, we get to see yellowness of the eye where patient is jaundice and all that patient comes in, oh doctor my body is itching me they've been scratching and all that or maybe the, the urine they've been passing is really dark colored urine or when they go to the toilet to pass to the stool is very pale in color you know so or maybe the, even a, a patient that are previously diagnosed with uh, diabetics their medication they just didn't realize that despite all the treatment they are taking the blood sugar is not being well regulated or in some new cases they may just be previous, they might previously not have that uh, diabetes, and all of a sudden their blood sugar just suddenly rises, rises up, and they're struggling to um, control that blood sugar. So this is what we see in most of these cases that really tells us when we see that like, oh, we hope this is not what it is. Okay. Um, Basically. All right. So who is more at risk of this disease? Um, could it be hereditary? Okay, so I, this will take me to um, certain risk factors, all right? So the cause is not basically known, but we have factors that will um, predispose uh, individuals to having this uh, deadly cancer, all right? So um, and, and the major thing is it is most common in ages between um, 60 to 80, all right? basically from 45 but the peak period is about let's say about two thirds or call at least at the age of 63 but between ages 60 to 80 you find them it is common in men and four males yes i've been able to manage four males okay so the, the, the male gender too is also a risk factor, all right? So what are these other risk factors? I mean, the ones that we can modify, we're looking at smoking, I mean, taking tobacco, alcohol intake. Some people are chain smokers, they, they can drink the breweries and all that. So it is a major risk factor. So another factor is the, fam the family history. Some patients, they have the BRCA gene, which is, um, uh, which is a, a, a major a predisposing factor. There's nothing you can do about it if this thing is in the family, it's non modifiable. You can't fight it, you can't beat it. But however, you can still do something about it. You can, we can start screening those patients early once you know that you have the family history. So the, the, the male gender too is also a risk factor, all right? So, what are these other risk factors? I mean, the one that we can modify, we're looking at smoking. I mean, taking tobacco, alcohol intake. Some people are chain smokers, they, they can drink the breweries and all that. So it is a major risk factor. So another factor is the, fam the family history. Some patients, they have the BRCA gene, which is, um, uh, which is a, a, a major a predisposing factor. There's nothing you can do about it. If this thing is in the family, it's not modifiable. You can't fight it, you can't beat it, but However, you can still do something about it. You can, we can start screening those patients early once you know that you have the family history. So we're talking about the BRCA, the presence of the BRCA gene, all right? Which, in, um, which in, uh, the, we're talking about the Lynch syndrome. Uh, the, fam the familiar is typical multiple um, mole melanoma, which is typically known as PAM. All right, these are just basically strong family family links. I mean, to this this one has to do with the DNA and all that. So we encourage patients to um, that, that has this strong family history of pancreatic cancer and all the syndromes to step forward on time and come out for screening. So how do we even get to, um, to screen these patients, all right? So what do we do? We tell them to come in for MRIs, for ultrasound scan, for CT scan, abdominopelvic and chest CT scan. We do imaging and all that for them. And also, um, if we find anything, we can hopefully we catch it in. 
So if we if we if we find anything, we go in and biopsy. We biopsy. We take samples and we send them for histopathology. We do uh, once the results confirm diagnosis. I mean, this will then take us to the next stage. Once we have that diagnosis, I mean, in the process of screening, that will also, will, once we have a diagnosis or find something there, then we'll go ahead and do staging investigation. We'll make sure that we look at the chest, the abdomen, the possible route of spread that the cancer can lead to. So once we have that, that will also guide us on the line of management and give us the, uh, the, the treatment prognosis, all right? So if, if we cut the patient early, I mean, we can, we can achieve it. Okay, um, but if we catch them late, we will not be able to do that. Okay, but we can manage. All right, Dr. Agumbiade. In other words, are you trying to say um, pancreatic cancer is not treatable? It is treatable if caught early. I mean, there is stages one to four. Stage one is when it's just tiny in the organ, stage two is just when it's big, a little bigger, stage three. When it's big and maybe it's local, it's locally advanced and all the stage four is when it has gone to different organs. Stage three, you can look regular spread. I mean, it's probably gone to new lymph nodes in that region. But when it, even at that stage three, we can still downstage. If we're able to downstage with chemotherapy or downstage with radiotherapy, then they can go in to surgically remove the tumor. And after that is done, we can also continue treatment with chemotherapy or radiotherapy afterwards. All right, because this disease does not um, um, present symptoms early enough, um, reducing or making it difficult to diagnose, what, how do we lower our risk now? How do we lower our risk? How do we lower our risk? Yes. By going for regular screening. You know your family history. Go for regular screening, do your imaging, MRI, ultrasound scan yearly. Then, if you have a strong family history, particularly strong family history, you must make sure you do not miss all these um, investigations. All right? So, and, and number one thing no smoking, stop smoking, stop alcohol intake, then maintain a good diet, maintain a good weight. You must make sure that your, your diet is rich in vegetables, in fruits, and whole nuts, all right? Then, um, in smaller portions. Mm -hmm. In smaller portions. In smaller portions. All right, um, before, I let yes. you, before I let you go, now, in this part of the world, we know medical routine is it's, it's a big deal. We hardly have um, access to health facilities because of time, because of funds and all that. Do you think um, all yes. the precautionary measures you mentioned now, especially um, routine checks, do you think that is achievable? What should a layman be doing now to prevent um, pancreatic cancer? I mean, we should all try to maintain a healthy lifestyle. If you are obese, try and lose weight and try not to gain too much weight. Alcohol, stop alcohol if possible. Then smoking, I mean, stop smoking if you're a chronic smoker or you're just learning to smoke. So you can at least start with that first, all right? So, but I mean, the minimum test that you can do, minimum test that one can really do is an ultrasound scan. It's the cheapest. I mean, you can still get that facility, get that done at any any um, hospital or laboratory. I mean, where they do uh, any radiological center, they can actually still do that. I think then next to that is um, next to that is a CT scan, and you know, so and those ones can actually patients can still um, have access to that. So, but mo first thing for I mean, the most important thing is just maintain a healthy lifestyle. And if you know you have a strong family history, do not keep yourself at home. I mean, reach out to people because once you have it, it is really deadly. Once it gets to state three, state four, it's a very, very difficult to control. All right? Okay, your final words as we wrap up this segment. I mean, what do we have to lose to live a healthy lifestyle? We have nothing to lose. So let's help us. And again, if we see people that have similar symptoms around us, let's encourage them to go to the hospital i mean the family there was a day i was at the pharmacy i went to get a medication and so i saw a woman and um, who had breast asymmetry 
I mean, one breast was looking bigger than the other. Not just that. She was just, I, I, I just saw that some, the shape was looking funny. So I just went close to her. Madam, is your breast swollen? Is this one, that one? I just, I mean, I took a keen interest in her. And lo and behold, she said, she's been keeping it for a while. She's had that swelling and been going out of hand. And I was able to win her to the hospital. So we should be very observant around us. When we move around, we can see people with um, with jaundice yellowness of the eye. We see them itching anyhow. Their color may be darker and something like that. So if we see people like that, I mean, see people with possible symptoms that I've mentioned, or people around you that complaining of maybe abdominal pain, and just very vague complain. They've been treating malaria for a while and all that. And all of a sudden, they have jaundice, their body is itching, and all that they are having, they are vomiting, or they pee, their urine is very dark, or suddenly their blood sugar just started going up, and despite all the everything they are doing, they are not finding control. Please, let's try and encourage those people. Let's be our brother's keepers. Look out for them. Encourage them to go to the hospital. You never can tell what's going on in their body. All right, Dr. Semin Sokpo Lassunji Agumbiade, thank you so much for your time and expertise on um, pancreatic cancer. We really appreciate you. It's a pleasure to be here to be able to impact knowledge. Thank you so much for having me here all the time. I really appreciate you. It's thank pleasure. you so much, madam. It's a pleasure. And thank you, LTV8. <laughs> it's our pleasure. Thank you so much and enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I have been speaking. Bye. To Bye. I have been speaking with Dr. Temi Tokbola Sunji Agumbia, the consultant radiation and clinical oncologist with the oncology department, Lagos State University Teaching Hospital, Ikeja, Lagos, on how to manage um, pancreatic cancer. Sound Health continues with trending health report from around the world. Please stay tuned. Well, the program has been Sound Health on Lagos Television, and we have been looking at pancreatic cancer, one of the fourth leading cause of cancer death in the world. You heard what Dr. Lassunji Agumbiade said. Um, you should report symptoms early to the nearest health facility. Do not self-medicate. For comments and inquiries, or you have topics you'd like us to treat, send SMS to 35 or follow us on social media at LTV Social. Hashtag sound health. A sound health is a sound mind. Make healthy living your choice. Living your choice.